So today I thought I'd do a video about um, what sort of tools and equipment I keep here with me at SSU um, instead of at home. Uh, you know, I feel like it's a good idea for, especially for me, if I want to make something. Um, laboratories and makers and the makerspace are not always open here, uh, especially on weekends. So if I want to throw something together, I got to be able to have the equipment um, to do that. So I do have a pretty good assortment of stuff. Uh, so what you're looking at right now is my, just the general desk area. So let's go into the individual things. We can start with over here on the side. I have um, ba uh, custom 3D printed battery holders for my two Makita um, 1.5 amp hour batteries that I keep here. I only keep the 1.5s because I keep the big ones at home because I have bigger things to run at home. Uh, down here we got uh, power... Um, a uh, power strip keeps all my plug everything in here because I only got one outlet in this area. Got a desk lamp. Uh, I don't really use the lamp. <laughs> in fact, the light bulb is broken. Um, uh, I got my uh, uh, Baofeng UV5R uh, radio. This is for um, I listen to the campus police frequency, and then I have a frequency that I'm able to talk with one of my friends. Um, we have a we have a frequency with a custom like CTCSS tone and all that that we talk to each other on. Um, up top, I got my uh, battery charger for the Makita batteries. Um, it's important to keep those charged, especially with the old 1.5 ones because they don't have a cutoff circuit. So you got to make sure you keep them charged. Otherwise, if that voltage drops too low, then they're they're no longer any good. Now down here, I got the uh, oscilloscope. And over here, let me uh, turn it on. Got my power supply. Um, and I'm gonna go into a video on this power supply because I haven't done a full video on it and I think it's pretty cool. Um, so uh, on, top of the, on top of the power supply, I keep leads for the power supply and multimeter. Um, I think I've shown this multimeter before. I keep a, it's the uh, Harbor Freight Ames instruments, whatever the cheapest one is, that's um, not the pocket one, but the next one in the line, the cheapest one made by Ames, which is Harbor Freight's best uh, multimeter one. Uh, I got a post-it note here of how to hook up a current shunt to the oscilloscope if I want to measure an AC appliance. Um, got a bunch of drawers. Up in this top one, we got alligator clips that I haven't hooked up to anything yet. And in here, I got some current shunt resistors. And then I got these two big ass ceramic uh, uh, one, um, uh, 100 watt uh, resistors. And so those are good for current shunts. I uh, got screwdrivers and hex keys. I have a lot more screwdrivers in another drawer. Uh, got uh, zip ties and wire. Um, these are just some completed circuits that I have done that are just sitting there. This little amplifier thing, and that's a like LED blinker thing that would, I had for Halloween. Uh, got the keys, a lot of keys. Uh, no pliers and cutters in there right now because I actually have a new rack for that that I'll show you. Um, this organization box is empty, so is this one. This one's got resistors in it, and the bottom one there has heat shrink in it. Uh, heat shrink tube. Got a little mini vise here. I use this thing all the time. Got uh, this transformer that I like to play around with sometimes. Uh, this thing I put in, if I put in the uh, 120 volts, I get about 550 volts out, which is crazy. Um, yeah, you put about 20 volts in and you get about 100 volts out, which is crazy. Um, Although I know that there's much higher, you know, much higher power transfers. Over here, I've got a bunch of stuff. These are just my cable hooks. So I got uh, oscilloscope probes, and I can start taking these things off one by one to explain. This is a BNC to BNC cable. I use this to like connect things that are BNC to the oscilloscope, or I use it to measure the function generator on the oscilloscope. We got um, that's the USB power cable for the oscilloscope. I think I have to do a video on that too. I uh, This oscilloscope originally only works on USB, but uh, instead I've put it on, um, I've added in a internal power supply. 
Uh, and even, there's a really cool feature when I do the video, I'll explain it. Uh, we got a, a USB-C to lightning cable. I'm an Apple guy, so got that. Also got USB-A to lightning. I uh, got an extra set of uh, banana to alligator clip. I used to carry these with the multimeter, but I bought clips for the multimeter. So these are just pretty much extra for this power supply or uh, something else that I will go grab uh, in a couple minutes. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Got a um, Apple Watch charger. Uh, I got another one here, so this is just a spare. Um, got a, uh, what's this? This is another, uh, this is an alligator clip to alligator clip. Those are really useful to have. Um, this is the USB-A to USB-A to export um, photos from the oscilloscope, which is pretty cool. This is a custom probe uh, that I made for the oscilloscope. Um, it's just a regular BNC cable. In fact, look at this. HP. I uh, found that in my grandpa's shop along with a lot of the stuff in there is from HP because that's where he worked. Um, and including all the machines are from HP. Um, this is just a... Um, USB mini, uh, USB A to mini USB. Uh, I use this to talk to um, our Arduino Nanos. I uh, got another uh, alligator clip to alligator clip. Another lightning to um, USB or USB A to lightning. Um, you know, I, I got an iPad and a phone and an AirPods, so I gotta uh, keep all those charged. Um, so, yeah, and then I got just the oscilloscope probes there. Um, over here on this wall, I keep wire strippers. These are just screwdrivers that I like to have ready at hand. So I got some like number one and number zero Phillips. Uh, in fact, I think that's a zero and then this is a double zero. Um, and then I got a Phillips two and a flathead and then flatheads here too. I got this pair of pliers. I don't remember what they call these. Leave it down in the comments below if you can tell me what they're called. I, I don't remember what they're called. I uh, got some flush cutters. Um, those are Harbor Freight. Pretty good deal, I think. They're five bucks and they're still going strong. Uh, Need those pliers. Uh, down here, th by the way, I custom 3D printed this. I designed it and then 3D printed it in the makerspace. Uh, here, I also custom. Uh, you can see that it ran in a filament, but oh well, it's good enough. Uh, this holds a uh, box of wire. So this is a uh, hookup wire. I believe that this is 18 gauge solid. Um, and then you got a bunch of uh, screwdriver and drill bits up here. Always good to have them. These two are nice and secure because these are, um, those are expensive. Those are uh, Makita um, Phillips two. Uh, I've learned, I've learned from the past that if you're, uh, the more you spend on a Phillips two bit, the longer it's going to last. So these were, these are probably 90 to a dollar, 90 cents to a dollar a piece, which seems very expensive. But like I said, they last a really long time. Uh, I got another set of, uh, so this is two alligator to alligator. Um, got some binders here, like this binder. This is actually just electronics information and other stuff. So this is a Starrett, um decimal equivalent chart. So if I had dial calipers here, which I don't, I have digital calipers here. Uh, we got a um, uh, got a uh, resistor color code chart. Um, even though it's in black and white, I could still read it. I can still read that. Um, stuff's upside down now. I didn't put it in the right way. Uh, this is uh, I, um, yeah, this is for calculating SMD resistors. Uh, ceramic capacitor code chart. Um, we have a, um, this is a, another ceramic capacitor code chart. If I don't want to actually do the math, I usually use this chart. Another ceramic uh, capacitor code chart because uh, some of them are missing ones. So I, ha I have a couple. This is a um, SMB package size chart. Uh, and then we have an IC package chart. So we got, you know, this is, this is all through hole stuff. So, you know, TO220, uh, there's no TO92 on here. Oh no, TO92. Um, TO03, pentawatt, zip, dip, p dip, um, TO, you know, 2205, 
And then we got some more over here. This has got a much bigger one. We got some SMD stuff in here too. Pentawatt, G220, you know, the, you know, pretty much the ones you use all the time. We also got some other SMD stuff down here. Then we got another SMD, and then now we have an SMD package chart, and it shows the different grid arrays. So ball grid array, you know, pins off to the side. I, I don't remember what these are called, but yeah, SMD resistors and, you know, um, ICs and ceramic capacitors and tantalum capacitors for SMD. Yeah, those are pretty cool. Um, uh, and then on the wall here, because these are the ones that I use the most often, uh, I get lazy and I don't want to do the math on the resistors. And the color code charts are sometimes pretty stupid. The way they're laid out, uh, it can be really confusing. Um, so this chart, you know, has like all of the different resistor codes and it tells you the value. And then this chart, um, these I just found online and printed them off. Uh, this is that same, one of those ceramic capacitor charts. Um, uh, let's see, what else do I have in my setup here? Oh, yes. Um, allow me a second to take this up here. Got, um, this is my 10 amp Variac. Um, so most people who've watched my channel before have seen this thing, but just in case you haven't, uh, this, I've made pretty much the whole thing myself. The very, I came from my grandfather's shop, of course. Um, and, uh, it was in a drawer and I asked him if it could, if I could have it. He's like, yeah, I'm never going to use it. So, and then I have another, um, 3.75 amp one at home. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this, you know, one, two, one forty. Uh, this can actually go to almost 150. Um, but, um, yeah, so it's ready for 10 amps. And then I built this wooden part in the front. So you got outlets and then bananas. Um, and this knob allows you to select between the two different loads. So you can switch between outlets or terminals or the term. So the banana terminals, and then I got the main power switch and this is an industrial power switch. So it's spring loaded in the opposition, which is pretty cool. Uh, got a breaker. Got an input breaker, this is the load breaker, and then an input breaker. So this is on the input side of the power, so because power cable goes right into this breaker. And then this is on the load side, so that um, you, the load can't draw too much current. Uh, saved me many times on that load breaker, you know, from saved it from burning this thing up. Um, very good to have. Uh, those are both 10 amp, by the way. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? Oh yeah, this is a big old uh, capacitor bank. These are some 80 volts, uh, 4,700 microfarad capacitors I got from the laboratory. Um, got my Christmas tree up because it is Christmas at the moment and, my, and a bottle of Febreze for some reason. Um, anyway, I uh, got, yeah, then I got, like I said, I got the, uh, let me, uh, I'm gonna have to cut that. Uh, anyway, got my, uh, got my radio here. Like I mentioned before, yeah, it's monitoring the uh, campus police uh, frequency. And let's look down into the tool drawer. Uh, I do have more things to show you after the tool drawer, but I have to cut the video and then you know, through the magic of editing, you'll see it. Uh, I have a impact driver. Uh, I didn't take a drill because I gotta leave the drill for my parents. Uh, even though we already have two drills, I have my drill and then they have their drill, but they want my drill. Um, <laughs> So I took the impact driver and I have drill bits for this. Um, these guys, these DeWalt ones are made to fit into the um, collet. Um, in fact, the DeWalt ones are advertised as impact ready. Uh, got a current clamp meter, the dial's broken, but it still works. Uh, I never, I've never, I don't think I've ever used the voltage and the uh, um, resistance and all, all the other shit. I only use the current clamp on this. Um, and this is a, this is an AC only. This is like 20 bucks. AC only, no, uh, no DC. I don't want to pay the money for a DC current clamp. Um, although, um, I do have a list, uh, for anybody who's still watching. I don't, probably very few people. But for anybody who's still watching that wants to contribute to the channel, uh, to my channel and me doing more projects, I have a list now listed with all of my, um, all of my wish list items of things that I want, uh, that can help me improve my videos and do more stuff on this channel.
so this is a um, this is a uh, j this is j literally just a QO breaker panel, two two spots, and I got a 15 amp breaker in there. And this is just I put it in if I know that I'm gonna have some problems with something that it might trip a breaker uh, rather than tripping the one for the room, uh, because uh, the way that they have that set up in the dorms here is really weird. We have um, one 15 amp breaker for I actually I think it might be a 20 amp, but yeah. One, I think it's, yeah, I think it's 120 amp breaker for two rooms, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, just all the outlets in two rooms, which is, yeah, a little bit weird. Um, but, I mean, I guess they figure you're not going to be trying to run power tools like I would be. Uh, anyway, so I'd like to put this in series so that uh, I avoid tripping the other uh, breaker, although it can still happen. We got a um, adjustable wrench. I didn't have one of these. I had a mini one, but I didn't have one of the full-size ones. So last time I went home, I brought one of those. I have my battery-powered Hakko, uh, uh, Hakko 951 soldering iron. Uh, excellent uh, thing. Although I do recommend just get like a, a big old lithium-ion battery pack and connect it. And get an 8.4 volt lithium-ion battery pack instead of uh, using the double A's. The double A's just don't make it hot enough and they don't last very long. So if you get a big old 8.4 volt lithium ion battery pack and adapt the Hakko 951 or um, Hakko uh, FX902, excellent, uh, works great. In fact, I usually run it off my power supply um, with a special feature that I'll show you in the next one, uh, in the next video. I got a pair of ice grips, digital calipers, I got um, a set of springs here. Uh, we got Big giant uh, screwdriver, a glue gun. A lot of this stuff is very useful for electronics projects or whatever else I'm trying to do. Remaining electronics projects here. Got a uh, file. Um, got this uh, screwdriver thing that I usually keep in my bag uh, just because it's really nice to have in the bag. Um, non contact voltage sensor or a piece of shit. As, uh, I would like to call it. this. This is like a death stick. This thing would kill you um, if you don't use it right. Um, in fact, I don't even. I wouldn't even use it at all. Uh, I got a T handle screwdriver thing with bits in it at the top. It, the cheapo Harbor Freight one, but it's got a cool little feature with the kind of bits in the top. Although it's made of really thin plastic. Although the entire set was like ten bucks, so I ain't complaining. Um, Get another little flathead screwdriver there. I got two of these cheapo soldering irons. This is a test light uh, that I also used to keep in my bag. I don't know why it's not in my bag at the moment. Got a flux pen for soldering. Um, got XLR connectors. Uh, I find those really useful. I have a ton of them and I have an extension XLR cable here. I only have one XLR cable here. I have a lot more XLR cables. Go so in these little screwdrivers, which probably belongs up there. Um, but yeah, you get the gist. Quite a bit of stuff in here too. So I've got two more things here that are pretty cool. Um, this, I, I know that people know that I have it, but I don't think they've seen the special box that I have in it. This latch is new, it's a little stiff. The last latch I had made of wood and broke. Anyway, uh, but it, is, it keeps it closed, which is what I like. Uh, so this is the this is the Hakko um, FX888D uh, soldering station. So, um, and excellent. If you're going to buy a soldering station, I would highly recommend this one, and I would also highly recommend, even though I never used it, I would also highly, the reviews that I've seen for it are pretty good, I would also highly recommend the Hakko FX951 uh, if you want the internal heated cartridges. This has just got the externally heated cartridges, but it's still good enough. Um, and then I got a solder roll, and so this is actually designed that this whole part down here will come out, and then everything sits on top of it, and it's ready to go. Um, most of the time, though, if I'm going to do something quick, I just keep it in the box. You can't do electronics without components. So I have all my components here. So we've got 5-volt relays for Arduino. I, there's only one in there at the moment. I have a, I have a lot more at home. Uh, relays, got a lot of them. A lot of these I just took from the lab because they got a bunch of stuff for, from the laboratory because they got a bunch of stuff. Um... I figured I could use them. I've uh, got potentiometers. Um, we got uh, um, electrolytic capacitors. 
uh, integrated circuits, ceramic capacitors, large BJTs, small BJTs, Arduino, um, got some batteries. I used to keep, I, I used to have some lithium ion ones in there. These are uh, nickel metal cat. I honestly need to recycle them because uh, they're no good. Uh, diodes, resistors, but I do have that box of assorted resistors as well. Uh, uh, we got some three pin components. So there's some voltage regulators, some MOSFETs, some other stuff in there, tri and shit. Uh, this is miscellaneous stuff. So we got some uh, reed switches, um, speakers. One of these speakers is busted. I don't remember which one. I'm going to throw it away, whichever one it is. Got some serial connectors. You know, the, the, they don't have to be for serial, but yeah, they're just connectors. This, I think, is a, I don't know, a, a, like a, you know, thermal probe or something, a thermal fuse or something like that. Uh, got a little uh, seven second display with three numbers on there. I think I pulled that out of my old soldering iron. One of these, these I found on RF. I don't, I don't know if they're either variable inductors or variable resistors. Um, like buzzers and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Uh, sockets, because I've been trying to use more sockets than soldering my ICs directly to the boards. Um, so yeah, those are the ones I have. Got inductors. And then I got an IC, into, uh, a IC kit that I bought online. So this is a lot of really cool stuff. Um, probably one of the most used ones, the 555 timer. I did a project for electrical engineering uh, yesterday. And probably over half of them all use the 555 timer. It, it's that versatile, uh, which is really cool. Uh, it, it, and it's really cool that it's still that good today. Um, and we got some op amps. Uh, audio amplifiers, uh, some comparators, um, you know, some some things that I don't know if I've ever that I'll ever use. Some uh, Darlington array transistors. Um, this this I might consider using because this will give you a negative uh, voltage supply, which is pretty cool because I don't have a negative voltage supply. PDM controller, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so that's what I keep in there. Um, oh yeah, a couple other things to mention. This, uh, the, I know that the capacitor isn't soldered in place, I need to do that. But this is a cool little um, bridge rectifier that goes into the Variac. Uh, and so this will give me about oh, up to 200 volts DC out of it uh, because of the capacitor. It'll step up that voltage, um, which is pretty cool. Under load, that's going to sag, but uh, still, you probably get around 180, which is pretty good for DC. <laughs> Um, I'm even considering put a, trying to hook this same thing up to here because I'm pretty sure that that, those, uh, that capacitor or that uh, rectifier is, I think it's rated to over 1,000 volts. Uh, so I might be able to get about 1,000 volts out of this if I get the right, um, if I get enough uh, capacitors. Definitely one thing I really like about Sonoma State is they got a, uh, I, uh, the room situation that I'm in, I got my own bathroom, which is really cool. Uh, anyway, so underneath my sink I keep uh, just because it's out of the way and it's uh, it, these are really expensive so I don't really want people to see them and it's also out of the way from the rest of the stuff so it doesn't get damaged uh, this is these are my um, three Sennheiser um, EW100 uh, G2 uh, lab lab mics and these are here I would keep this at home with the audio setup uh, I usually have my little um, Behringer uh, like X, Y, and X, I don't even know how you say it, 1202 mixer here, but that's at home right now running my Christmas light show. Um, but anyway, that's usually here with me. Although next semester, I'll probably bring the full setup um, here just as a, uh, I can use it as a table and I can use it for the audio. But anyway, so yeah, I keep these in here just to be safe. And the, the only reason these are here, because like I said, they'd be at home with the audio stuff is because um, uh, the uh, the electrical engineering department decided that they want to do a little, um, uh, uh, decided that, uh, to, for the E club, for the electrical engineering club, they want it, they give us some projects. So one of the project that, projects that was suggested is a very sensitive microphone that can pick up, um, that can pick up, uh, audio and convert that to radio waves, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, so you would pick up the frequencies and then convert that to the frequency of radio waves. And then the other thing is the opposite, where you can um, hear the you can hear radio waves. So whatever frequency the radio wave is, you'll be able to hear it in an audible um, frequency. Uh, yeah, in an audible um, sound, which is pretty cool. But um, but what does make that a uh, little bit um, weird is especially because the human hearing range is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. There really isn't mu uh, that much in that range. If you really wanted to find something, you'd be better off before you do making that project. First of all, I've looked at, you can look at the U.S. frequency allocation chart, um, which is um, a publicly available document online. Just look up U.S. frequency allocation chart and uh, it will tell you what, ev what uh, each frequency and band is assigned to in all registered, uh, like all known radio frequencies in the entire, uh, it, that exist. So it, it'll show you what the, what's that assigned to. And there really isn't much in that area from it, like you hit about, I think it's about 12 kilohertz. You can hear, um, maritime radio, but we're not really that close to the ocean here. So I don't really know. Um, but yeah, that's about all you can get in that frequency range. So I don't know. Yeah, you'd be better off, um, like I was saying before, you'd be better off actually using a um, oscilloscope and looking for the frequencies that you can actually pick up in that range.